What's going on, everybody? Welcome to another episode of the Ball Fake Podcast. Today, we're joined by our first interviewer, Alex Hemingway from Clemson. How you doing, Alex? I'm good. I'm good. Thanks for having me on. Appreciate y'all. Welcome, for welcome. Sure, man. You know, yep. we're just going to deep dive into, you know, some questions about last season and, you know, kind of deep dive into this upcoming season as well. But um, for the people that don't know who you are, Alex, please just give us a brief summary on, like, who you are, your upbringing, and, you know, your stuff like that. Of course, of course. Well, uh, like you said, um, my name's Alex Hemingway, uh, uh guard, uh, junior, my third year uh, this year. And um, yeah, I came up through uh, Newburgh, Indiana. That's where I'm from. Um, came up through Castle High School uh, four years, two, uh, three years ago, and then uh, graduated two or two or three years ago, and then moved on uh, on down here to South Carolina and uh, playing here for, for three years now. That's dope. That's dope. And you know what? I, I was doing some research on you and everything, and I came across that your head coach, Bra uh, what's his name? Coach Brownell, right. he actually yep. played soccer in college with your father and everything. And I just want to know, did that play a huge part in you deciding to come to Clemson and everything? Um, I wouldn't say it it, it played a, a role, but it, it helped. It definitely helped having that connection. That Because today uh, they played, I want to say, it was actually in high school. They played... Uh, Oh, uh, I think for probably two or three years when my dad was a, 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 a junior, I want to say mm -hmm. he was, dad was a freshman. So then they got, they got like those two, two or three years to play with each other. With them knowing each other and having that kind of Southern Indiana connection that, that, that kind of helped boost started uh, the recruiting process. Like before we even kind of got into talk, talking about anything. Yeah. Uh, and, and with that being said, what separated Clemson's program from schools like DePaul and Creighton, those other schools that were also recruiting you as well? Uh, really, I just felt more just like a family atmosphere here. It just felt really like a, a, a strong bond just between the coaches and the players and just uh, the, the the town in general. It, it seemed like it had a really uh, loyal fan base. Everybody here seemed like they, they were rooting for you. So uh, that was just kind of what I, I saw and what I liked about, about it here. Yeah, that's good. And, you know, with, with the fans and everybody coming back this upcoming season, hopefully you guys will, you know, have an opportunity to win the ACC title. But, you know, with all that being said, I want to know, Coach Brownell, he's one of the best coaches all time at, in Clemson basketball history. He actually has the most wins in school history. And, you yep. know, with all that being said, I want to know, how does he prepare you guys for big games? Like when it comes to, you know, you're heading into Duke and UNC and Cameron Indoor Stadium and all that. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, well, he, he does a great job. Him and the whole staff—they do a phenomenal job of getting us prepared, the scouting report, and everything. We uh, usually have at least two to three days just going over the scouting report, going over personnel, and then coming out. We'll have uh, shoot. I'd, I'd probably say five plus walkthroughs before we even play that day, day of that game. They, I mean, they just they they over prepare, which is good in their job That's of work. Good. Yeah, you good. can never you can never really over prepare. In uh, college basketball, because you really never know what's going to go out and what's going to happen when you're out on the court. So uh, yeah, they they do they do a phenomenal job of just getting us ready and doing everything they can for us to go out prepared. Yeah, and I, I got one more question before I swing it over to Greg. I was going to wait to ask this question, but you know, since you brought yeah. all, all that up, I want to ask you. Yeah. Do you think the ACC conference is a lot tougher than the Big Ten conference? Because we know you play the, uh, you participate in the ACC Big Ten Challenge. Right. And the Big Ten tends to whoop you guys' ass every year. So I just want hey, to know, who, who, which conference do you think is better? Shoot. Well, I mean, yeah, from, from this past year, you saw, like you said, the Big Ten, was well, they, they were loaded this year. So, but I know, and, and, and my, and a lot of people's opinions, ACC, uh, is a, is a very, very great conference. Uh, it's really, it's a tough one to play and I'll tell you that, but uh, sure. but yeah, no, I think the, the, the Big Ten and the ACC, those have been two, the two kind of conferences that have been head, head and head these last couple years. So uh, yeah, hopefully uh, this next ACC Big Ten Challenge, the, the ACC can rep, rep a little harder than they, than they did last year. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. so I mean, switching over, um, I just want to describe to our audience, how, how's your game? What are you working on this off season? What are you doing to get prepared for this next season coming up? I mean, everybody knows that your junior year is the most important year. So how are you going to come in with the mindset of what are you going to work on this off season? Definitely, definitely. Yeah, so I've, I've been working on a whole lot of whole lot of things, uh, you know, mainly just uh, being in the weight room, getting stronger, you know, putting on some weight, uh, 
and then on court stuff, just you know, coming off the bounce a little more, being able to do a little more with the rock, uh, come off screens, just create for for other players. Because uh, we're we're going to be deep at the guard spot this year, so you know, just trying to to tighten up everything and make sure everything's kind of fine fine tooled in order to to come out this year and uh, perform. Okay, okay. You guys, y'all have like a ten guard rotation. <laughs> yeah, kind of tough for you to find minutes out. Yeah, there it is, and that and that and that leads you to my next question. How was it with it? with the different minutes and sometimes you started and sometimes you did it. How was that coming in and um, getting getting touches and getting looks and fitting where you, where you can fit in, in your game, you right. guys' offense? Yeah, well, then, thankfully, I, I've kind of, uh, coming off the bench, kind of grown into that role, you know. Uh, my, my high school freshman year, I, I came off the bench uh, for varsity. So I kind of, that being that young and having to come off the bench and having to basically be instant offense when, when I'm that young, I kind of got to be able to figure it out and see, get, get kind of the ins and outs of, of what it takes to be able to, to, you know, come in and do it at this level. So thankfully I, I had that to kind of lean on uh, this past year and the year before to be able to just, you know, come off the bench when I do uh, and just give valuable minutes. So yeah, that's been, it's been really, really helpful to have that for sure. No, that's yeah, good. For sure. That's good. And my, yeah, my next question was how how was it playing during COVID? Was it tough? Was it a lot of different protocols? Did the ACC was it was it hard? Were they on your ass a lot? Like how was it? Man, no, nah, it, it was it was a bitch. I'll just say that. Um, <laughs> you know, it, the farther the year went on, it got it slowly got better because down here in South Carolina, they they started passing some uh, or the mayor started lifting some uh, protocols and stuff. So we were allowed. I think it was like 1,200, 1,300 fans which I mean is a whole lot more than like whenever we went to Miami or Duke didn't have any uh, right. and so on. So, um, but yeah, at, at, at the beginning, it was rough, man. Going to, especially over our first Thanksgiving tournament, we had no fans in there and it, it was just, it was straight up AAU. That's what it was. It was college right. AAU. So uh, yeah, no, it, it, was, it was hard, but you know, we got through it. So I'm just thankful to be able to, to, to be on the other end of that and hopefully have a, a season this year with with full capacity right and right, you know, right with with that being said alex we all know that you know you are basically the lone shooter on this team you might have another guy that you know maybe one or two other players that are able to knock down shots from outside but i want to know how do you affect the game besides from shooting the uh, three-pointer and everything yeah well that from what i uh kind of prided myself on this past year was uh defense uh, defense has always been my uh, Achilles heel. I've never been that 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 dude on the defensive end that's been able to you know get steals or lock up or do anything. I, I've just been able to hold my own. But uh, I feel like the, the middle of this last year, I kind of figured out ways to impact the game on a defensive end because I, I went through a little struggle in the the kind of middle to to end of the season, uh, shooting a little bit. So the the reason I felt like I was uh, staying on the court more was surprisingly my defense more than my offense, just because I was being able to figure out ways to, you know, just hold my own and just create uh, create gaps for us to create offensively on the defensive end. For sure. And, you know, with, with you bringing up defense and everything, I want to know how has Coach Brunel really helped you improve defensively from an individual standpoint? Oh, yeah, he's done a phenomenal job being able to do that. Uh, you know, he, he's, he's a defensive coach. If you can't really play defense, you're not, you're not going to be in there for long. Right. Uh, so I, I figured that out real quick. Um, but he's just—he's he, just a real—he's just a great coach, honestly. And to sum it all up, uh, he does a great job of ex explaining you in detail what 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 you need to do. And then, then you know, if you're not doing it, he—he's he's on you to make sure that you keep keep doing what you need to do in order to be able to to progress and, and get to where he wants you to be. What I, what I like most about your game is that not only can you shoot, but you can also slash and play off ball. How does that how does that help your teammates with that with that ability not to just be, a, you know, just a lone shooter? Because that's what I really liked your game when I was studying your film was that you you're willing to a lot of shooters don't like to go to the paint and finish in the paint. So you go into the rim and can take the contact. I like that. So how, how will you bring that bring that intensity on the offense end this year? Yeah, definitely, definitely. Like I said, it's the summer. I've been really been working on, you know, just keep getting tired with the rock, you know, creating for other guys. Because, I mean, when you got, when you're, like you said, kind of the, the lone sharpshooter, uh, a lot of, get, like, it's the defense, they're just running at you. So, yeah, I mean, if you can give a, a one ball fake, one dribble or two dribbles, get into the paint, you're going to have help side to collapse on you. So you're at least going to have two or three guys that you can you can see for open shots. So just, you know, being able to have that in your game is, is key, just to being able to get your guys other shots and being able to create for other players. 
Yeah, and you you talked about how you've been able to improve defensively, and we already know that you're basically a three points marksman. But what aspect of your game do you feel like goes most underappreciated? Uh, uh, like I said, probably defense, honestly, man. Because I mean, e even though I like I said, I feel like I improved a lot this year. It's still, it's not where I, I want it to be. So I feel like it's still kind of slept on. But you know, uh, like 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 I told you, Brownell, Coach Brownell, he's been he's been doing a great job of you know helping me and uh, just kind of knick knacking every every little thing that I can improve in order to you know get it to where he wants it to be and where I want it to be ultimately. Good, good. So switching switching gears, what are your goals for this season for yourself, for your teammates, stuff like that? Man, honestly, just, you know, just to kind of sum it up, not get into the details, I, I just win, you know. I mean, we, we'd all love to get back to the tournament and everything, but uh, one thing that I've learned is over the past year, you can't look too far ahead. So uh, really just kind of going on a day-to-day -day basis, you know, just, of course, getting better individually, making sure all your tools are, are fine-tuned and everything's ready in that, that aspect, but also just you know, making sure the team's tightened it and making sure we're all on the same page. So we can just, you know, once the season begins, we can just go out there and, and just win. Cause you win, winning gets get you there. And that's, that's what we all know. Most definitely. And I want to know, you talked about, you know, it's very tough playing in the ACC conference and, you know, non-conference competition is also very tough as well. But I want to know who has been the toughest player you've had to guard while playing for the Clemson Tigers? Man. Uh, it could be it could be in conference. It could be outside of conference. But. Yeah, oh yeah, yeah. No, there's there's a lot. There are a lot of dogs. Um, I honestly have to say though, probably uh, probably the, the the tournament game. Uh, Geo Baker. He 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 was oh, tough. Okay. Yeah, he he was tough. He uh, yeah he had, he had a nice little little hezy cross. I mean, he just had a lot of stuff to his game, so it was it was hard to you know keep him in front or whatever. But uh, yeah, he's he's a great great player. How, how was that? How was that tournament? How was that tournament environment? How was that playing in the tournament for the first time? Did, and it was describe it. Yeah, it was awesome. Being able to to, to play a tournament in your in your home state that's that's that was that was phenomenal. I couldn't couldn't have asked for really anything more other than more fans. That that would have been my only thing. But but yeah, now to be able to to, to play a tournament and have like a lot of a lot of people, a lot of my friends, a lot of the people that I grew up with there, it was it was really really dope. And okay. Speaking of the tournament and all that, you guys did, I believe, I don't know if it was in the ACC conference or what, I can't really recall, but there was one point in the second half of the season where you guys were on a six, seven game win streak. I'm not sure if you were starting during that standpoint, but with all that being said, did you have to, how hard was it adjusting coming off of the bench and having a big role in the starting lineup and, you know, having more opportunity to knock down more three pointers, uh, defend multiple positions, you know, just stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah, I, oh yeah, it was it was huge, honestly. Um, I, I can't remember. Uh, let's see, it was the, the one of the Miami games when we played at Miami. That was my first start, um, and then after after that, it just the ball kind of rolling because I, I, I had a good performance that game, and then they kind of kind of trusted me in, in that role. So uh, so yeah, being able to just kind of transition from not coming off the bench to or from coming off the bench to not coming off the bench, it, it took me just a a few games after that, just to kind of get get the hang of it, but but yeah, after that, I I, I felt like I did a did a pretty good job of being able to, to you know flip that switch and just come come right out of the gate instead, you know, getting four to five minutes to be able to just kind of prepare yourself. Yeah, and speak speaking of that, um, one game that stood out to me, one of your, one of one of the games I marked down as your highlighted games. Describe the game at uh, Wake Forest. You had 17 points, you knocked down five threes. Like, what was it that night that got you going that night? Yeah, yeah, oh yeah, that was uh, that was a good one. That was just you know, I don't, I don't, I just had a, uh, a good game that night. You know, like I said, I had a little bit of a, of a struggle. Uh, I think probably before a couple games before that, you know, just outside shooting is kind of uh, hit and miss sometimes, as, as everybody knows. So uh, just being able to that was one of the games where I just got to see it go through the hoop and it, it you know just flip flip the switch. I saw it, saw it go through the hoop, and that for shooters, that's all you need to see sometimes. Right. And I, I believe that game was in the midst of, you know, y'all's winning streak and everything. But I want to know, was that one of the highest points of the season for you individually? Oh, uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I would definitely say so. That's I mean, that's been my career. That's my career high right now. So, yeah, I would definitely say that individually, that'd be that'd be a high point for sure. No doubt. And I want to I want to know. 
how was it playing with Amir Sims? I know we know this is a guy. He was one of the best big men in the entire conference. You know, he's got NBA potential. I'm not sure if he um, I believe he was a senior last year and he's probably going to enter the NBA draft this upcoming season. But what were some things you were able to learn from, you know, Amir Sims and how was he as a teammate overall? Oh, yeah, you can't you can ask more from a from a merit from a teammate and just a player aspect. He's been, you know, everything you kind of you want and more as a younger guy to play under um, coming in. You know, he just he he knew all the, the ins and outs, but he was a defensive guy. He knew everything on all like he's just an all around just a, a, a great teammate and great, great player. Uh, but yeah, no, with him, him being and entering the drafts and everything, I wish him nothing but the best. I know he'll he'll he'll, he'll do great wherever he ends up. But uh, yeah, whichever team or whichever spot he ends up at, they're they're going to be lucky to have him because he's just a, a hell of a guy and a hell of a player. And one of the last questions I want to ask you, obviously, you know, you're you're a kid from Newburgh slash the Evansville area in Indiana and everything. A lot of people know you from this area locally and everything. And, you know, we also have had a ton of other highly recruited players come out of these areas. Jay Quan Lau, Christian Lander at Indiana University right now. Yep. What are some things that, you know, that you've learned throughout your entire journey that has helped you accomplish all these goals to play at such a high level at a university like Clemson and what are some advice you would give to you know kids that are trying to achieve the same things that you were able to achieve for your basketball career right definitely definitely yeah what uh the main thing really I've learned is just don't don't stay complacent you know C complacency is something that kind of it's just almost like human nature you know when you get something you, you you've been wanting for a while and you get there you kind of don't know what to do so you just stay there but I mean the, the challenge is being able to, to once you get there like what's the next move so every every kind of next level, I guess you could say that I've I've kept kind of climbing. Uh, that's been one thing that I've always kind of in my head made sure I didn't do is stay stay in the same spot. I've always tried to you know the they always say get get better every day one one percent. So you know however I can get better whether on the court off the court, um, whatever it is you know just trying to not stay complacent and uh, keep getting better every single day. That's probably the biggest. Uh, the biggest advice that I would give to anybody, you know, coming up or just in general. And one of, one of the last questions I want to personally ask you is, how was it in that semi-state game? And I believe it was 2017 when you guys faced off against Ben Davis and, you know, y'all lost off a game winning shot. Uh, mm -hmm. Aaron Henry of, of Michigan State was actually one of the best players on that team and everything. But I just want you to, to kind of walk us through you know that experience and everything. Man, you put him put me on a spot for that one, dog. <laughs> That's funny. You unlocked a tough memory right there. Yeah, man. Um, I had to break it up. <laughs> no, no, you, it's all good. It's all love, bro. Now that being able to, like you said, that game was in probably top top three best games I've ever played in before. Like just the atmosphere of, like you said, the player with Aaron Henry, Josh Brewer, the guys on other team. Uh, uh, yeah, that that was just that was just an, an insane game, honestly. Uh, to be able to you know share the floor like with Aaron Henry at Michigan State, he'll, I mean he entered the draft this year, so he'll be able to to hopefully uh, get drafted this year. But yeah, now that that game uh, that was wild, you know, being able to. I think we were down, I think like ten with a minute thirty left or something like a minute minute twenty. So be, and we came all the way back and tied it somehow, and then they just come down and. Brewer pulled up from shoot. It felt like half court, but right. just inside the volleyball line and just stone cold killer. Interesting. Well, I think I think the last question I want to ask you is: Who do you have winning the NBA Finals this year? I don't know if you're big on you know watching these uh, NBA playoff games and everything right now. We're, Mavericks and Clippers are playing as of right now. Oh yeah. But who do you who do you have winning the NBA Finals this year? And please don't say the Brooklyn Nets. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm right on your same boat, man. I don't I don't want I don't want them to, but shoot, especially with I don't I, I was I was gonna say they were gonna be the favorites, but who knows with that hard news last night? Who knows? Yeah. Um, but shoot, I'm, I'm rooting for the Suns right now, man. To, to for Suns? for for CP and uh, D Book to get their first ring together. I feel like that 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 make me happy, man. To see them be able to win. I feel like that that definitely be a nice a nice little treat. Yeah, they they got to go through Jokic. I don't know if Aiton. Yeah, it's gonna be tough. A, it's gonna be a I tough match. Gonna be tough on this series, man. Nah, for sure. But but yeah, them them are the the Bucks. Honestly, if they if the Bucks get past the Nets, then I feel like they'll be. It's almost a cakewalk for them. Yeah, they they just gotta dominate inside and then get some contributions from free. Exactly. That's yeah. that's all they gotta do.
need a need a few more Alex Hemingways out there on the perimeter. <laughs> yeah, I, I can lay them up for for the, for the Bucks a couple times. Yes, sir. <laughs> I have a problem with that. No, uh, who's your who's your favorite NBA player? Oh man, honestly, surprisingly, D Book. It, I've, I've been following him okay. for a while, you know, because like and seeing him through the I was well, I was watched him on like Ball's Life, who mixtape in the coming up through high school. I, I liked his game because he was, you know, like a shooter, but he was kind of a little crafty. He had some sneaky athleticism. Um, so that was something that I kind of I liked. And, you know, I've kind of watched him grow and progress as a player. So he's been a guy that I've followed for, for a while. Him and Clay, him and Clay are probably my two favorites. So would you say you model your game around those two, those two players? Yeah, oh, definitely, definitely. Those are the guys I watch a lot and try to, you know, emulate some of my stuff, some of the moves after, for sure. Yeah, those, those, those two are probably the top two for sure. Yeah, I, I think you kind of, your game, it kind of reminds me a little bit of uh, Duncan Robinson to a certain degree. I mean, just the way you guys both move off ball. Yeah. I wish that Clemson offense kind of favored your, your off ball movement a little bit more because I do feel like in a lot of areas in the half court set, you guys are just very stagnant and mm -hmm. there's not much ball movement outside of the perimeter and everything. But I mean, hopefully with you being one of the veterans coming into, you know, this upcoming season, you'll be able to have a much bigger role and be able to ex ex expand on your success and everything. Oh, for sure. No doubt. No doubt. That's yeah. That's something that we're, you know, working on this summer, of course, being able to, to get everything moved on the offensive end and you just just getting ready for, for a big season, no doubt. Yeah, but I, I think the last thing I wanna I wanna tell you is since you know you're gonna be you're the first person that we've interviewed um at the high major level and everything, I wanna yeah. I wanna set a challenge for you this upcoming season. All right, let's we, know, we know you're a three points marksman. You shot about 38, 39% from three this year. Alex Hemingway, I'm challenging you to lead the ACC in three point percentage this year. I need Ooh. you to do that. For Ooh, I, I like that challenge. That I think you can challenge. do it. Be I think you can do it because you know you knock down a pretty decent amount of your shots with uh with a much minimized role. So with all that being said, with you being a junior and you know more than likely having a bigger role in this team, I think you're going to be able to really have more opportunities to knock down more threes and ultimately have a much bigger impact on this team. But yeah, I want you to lead the ACC in three point percentage, and when you do it, give me credit. <laughs> I got you, man. I like that. I like that. I I, I greatly accept that. I greatly accept that. For sure. It's one of the mom mentality type of challenges or something, man. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, Greg, do you have any final questions you want to ask Alex before we get out of here? Uh, no, nothing. Nothing. I got. Only thing I got to say is like, uh, what do you? How does it feel to go down in Castle history books as your thousand point score? How how did how was that moment? How was that night for you? Oh yeah, it was awesome. Being a, yeah, being able to be the the all time league score there is you know it's 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 great. Especially seeing all the people that that have come before me. You know, being on the scene with Jack Nungy, having him play there, and Blake Simmons, and all those kind of top Dietrich Finn, all those guys. You know, that come through. So so you know, just being able to have your name up there with them is it's 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 just a surreal and you know it's a great uh, a great thing just to kind of have to look back on and just and just realize that you know you're you're in great company. That's great. That's great. Well, man, hey, have a great season this year. Uh, don't beat up on my North Carolina Tar Heels too much. I did watch that game. You had a good game that game. But, uh, yeah, man, go out, do your best, man. Do you work hard this all season, and we're we going to look forward to watching your season this year. Definitely. No, I appreciate y'all having me on. Y'all got a nice nice little setup, man. And just whenever you guys want me back, just holler. I'm just a, just hey, a call for away. Sure. We'll, we'll for sure, sure for sure. you and your teammates come on here. Heck yeah, no, man, for sure, for sure. I'll let them know. But thank you guys for tuning in to another episode of the Ball Fake Podcast. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe and turn on post notifications if you're watching on YouTube. And if you're listening on Apple Podcasts or Spotify, make sure to give us a five-star rating and a nice little review. But, you know, besides that, it's your boy, Nicey Chunga Benny. I'm here with my co-host, Greg King. And we out. We out.